Hello lovely people, how are you all doing? I hope you're doing fine and I really do hope you're doing well. My name is Oma Duto, I'm a teens coach. Thank you very much for coming. If this is your first time here, you're welcome. But if you keep coming back, you're much appreciated. In this video, I just want to address something that I came across some time ago. I did a video on it, but I never got to post it. So, But I just saw some excerpts in it that I want to still share here. I want us to talk about the seeds we sow in the lives of our children. So this is majorly like a reaction to a video, Grow With Me, or the Grew With Me. Her name is Favo. It was a video she did a while back as to how she got pregnant as a teenager. And of course, when I hear such things, of course, you know, my antenna just stands up very, very straight and listening to all the full gist and every single thing that happened. So if you've not seen the video, I'm going to leave the link in the description box, but I'm just going to give you like a background of it. There's just one thing I want to pick out from this, even though there are several lessons that you could learn from watching that video. So if you're a parent listening to this, please go ahead and watch that video and gain all the things that it is that you can gain from it. But let me give a background story to what it is. So growing up in the village, she had this teacher, then she left the village and came back again to the village and on getting back to the village the teacher saw her and made a comment saying uh -uh, you've grown no and you know what that statement means where i come from where i come from doesn't mean that you have you are now taller or any of those things no it means that this person now looks matured matured in the sense that adolescence or puberty has kicked in puberty for a lady or for a girl of course you know what all of that means the basic shape of the child, the girl child has started forming. So that was what the, the teacher obviously saw and then made his comment. And then, of course, with a smile, and she walked away. And she went to the teacher's house and the teacher made a move, you know, came so close to her, almost having his way with her, but didn't. She said she looked scared, so probably that was why he didn't make a move. And then she went away. Now you see this process here, whatever it is that happened in this, this particular place, immediately she made this, she narrated this part of the story. I said the deal is done. The deal is sealed. It has been done, sealed, signed, delivered. Most times, I say boldly, or I make bold to say that the seeds we sow, in the lives of our children will germinate it is like a like a tree planted that in years coming you will see the tree that you planted if watered well if well taken care of well nourished will definitely germinate that's the same thing that this teacher had done he made the ground he he tilled the ground the statement he made you have grown no he tilled the ground. That was a seed sown. Then when she went to his house, made a move, that was another seed sown. He was watering the seed that he had planted. And saw so that the next time they met, it took place. Everything went on. As in, it was, it was already done from the first seed that was sown. So that when this act took place, the guy already knew he was going to have his way. So now as a parent, we ask ourselves, could we have prevented this or what could we have done to prevent this? I know many of you might be thinking about your setting right now. No, this was a village setting and I totally understood the story. Students go to teachers' houses, yes, to help them clean, sweep, farm and do all those kind of things. It was normal. It is still normal in our villages today. So it is not out of place for her to have been at the teacher's house. Yeah. And then as a normal human being, I mean, when someone makes a pass at you, we love it. True. See, Christian or not, I am born again. Forget. We love it whenever we are complimented. It feels good. Then when you are now female and you've not heard a guy say such nice things to you before and then you suddenly receive the first of it man it does something totally different to us 
So now, except if that seed was uprooted, that seed will germinate. That is where our relationship with our children comes to play. When that teacher made a move, she would have narrated to her parents or parents would have even inquired. But then for our teenagers, you can't suddenly wake up and want to be hearing all my gist. I would narrate. But if you have started hearing all my gist right from when I was a toddler, you know, when toddlers are busy mumbling all the things that they are busy saying to you and you're like, please just keep quiet, you talk too much, you know? And we, we are shushing them up and we're shutting them up. Oh yeah, that is the point that you want to begin to listen. When you are forming that kind of bond with your child, your child knows already that mommy or daddy has a listening ear anytime I am ready to speak. So that when the child grows into adolescence, the child still knows that you are ready to listen to gist. And a little tip here is, anytime we are listening to gist, please have your emotionless face on and have your fangs and claws put away. Because in listening to gist, they will tell you every and anything. It is not a time for us to claw down the child or say, you did that? How dare you do that? That child won't come tomorrow to tell you gist though. Uh -huh. That child will keep gist to him or herself. So what you want to do is to just listen to gist and laugh along. Then later, later, when you are having fun, later, you can now bring up the lesson so far from the various gists that have been shared with you. Then there was a video Blue Jeans did. I'm going to find it and link it up in the description box. Where he spoke about loving his girl child and how we should love our girl children. The truth is, eh? we can't praise our children enough. We can't cite them enough. My father used to do something that we call pep talk after morning devotion daily. And he ended it, of course, there were bashing moments, but he ended it with always telling us how beautiful and handsome we were and how much he loved us. He, it filled my mind so much that there was no guy on the street, there was no guy on the road that could tell me I look beautiful that will make me say, okay, I give you myself and I give you my all. No, it couldn't come that easy because I have heard it over and over. So you need to be selling something different to me. So these are the seeds we want to be sowing such that so somebody else come to sow a seed that is not in line with what has been sown or what has what is already germinated in the life of your children. It will not find any space to take root because you filled up the place already. The foundation has been laid. So that block does not fit into the structure that you are already building in the life of your child. So it will fall off. It won't take root. Yes, they might feel good when they hear it, but it wouldn't take root. It wouldn't last long. So sow the right kind of seeds. You want to ask yourself, what seeds have you been sowing in the life of your children? What seeds or what plants have taken root and germinated in the life of your children? If they are grown, look at their life right now. It is a product of what you have sown and what several other people they've come in contact with have sown already. If yours didn't take great root at the beginning, then what other people have done will take root. It's not too late. We can uproot and we can replant things that will take a better root in their lives. Thank you very much for listening to this video. If you love this video, kindly give this video a big fat thumbs up for me and subscribe if you have not done so already. I'm going to be seeing you all in the next one. Bye-bye.